another week. Hi, hey, Patreon. Stats. Yeah, we're a little late on this week's update for the weekly stats, but do have a little, a little one actually. To only two hundred and seventeen players compared to around three hundred to four hundred from the busier weeks of Kill Team. Yeah, a little bit tamer. Um, amusing to see some. I mean, in general, it seems like anyone that like is consistently doing well. Uh, this week kind of bucked the trends for everything. Wormblade, that's been crushing it, um, hardly got any games and had a below 40% win rate. Yeah. We also had Brood Brothers, you know, right smack tap around the 50%. So a whole bunch of weird things going on this week. I will make a couple caveats here that there were no large tournaments this weekend. So I believe the longest tournament was a four rounder, which does mean that the data is a little bit muddy. But one of the big surprises maybe is Gellerpox. They've been kind of one of these teams that's hailed as hard to play. But this week, a lot of players both took them and did well with them. Yeah, you know, I'm honestly not that surprised by that because Gellerpox still just like seem like they've they've got what it takes. It just needs the right player. Yeah, in Florida, they had a 4-0 record in a 15-person tournament, so not too I bad with four rounds. I have a little rounds. bit of insight onto that. Uh, oh. Apparently, at that particular tournament, they that Gellerpox player played against Strikeforce Justian three times in a row. Or four times in a row. Oh, right. I did hear about this a little bit on the command point. I didn't dig into it too much, but that's that definitely seems like a hard matchup for uh, Justian to win. You be fair that Justian player did play into the finals against that Gellerpox player, and that Justian player was 23, 22, 19, losing by six points against Gellerpox. So, hands off to Eric I. I don't know if you'll ever see this, but good job on crushing it with Justian. Definitely a weird week for the stats. We've got a couple of these winners that haven't been particularly up there. Veteran Guard being a big one, you know, 3.6% of this week's meta and 66% win rate. Actually, Salt Salt Lake Open, they had a six-rounder. That might be the longest tournament of the weekend. But with only 13 players, it's hard for me to really take too much from that. And Veteran Guard, that was a Dakota L from Squad Games. Oh, he played? He did, and it turns out Veteran Guard are good, actually, still. Who would have thought, with all of their rules basically just being standardized down to the rules that everyone else has to play with? So, good job on Dakota. I'm not overly surprised that someone could still do it. They are still a very good team. I'm actually really happy to hear that for Dakota. Um, but yeah, I mean, they, they are still good. They just were ridiculous before, and now they're down to earth. They are a much fair team. You do got to do all the work, but I think it's good when it feels like you have to do all the work to make a team work. So good job, Dakota. Uh, as far as other things, Corsair Voids Car had a pretty good week this week with a 3-0 record at a small tournament and then another 3-1 record along with a 50-50 and then a 1-2. and So they did end up with a pretty small sample size, but they did pretty well. Hernkin Jaeger also doing pretty well this week. Uh, one player in striking contention and everyone else with mostly winning records and one fully undefeated record at 201. So, okay, yeah, Her definitely have been one. Like, yeah, they've been one of those ones that is like consistently like at or slightly above 50%. So, like they, they yeah. never took a dive and they never like climbed way above everything. Um, they're just like solid, solid middle ground performers, but they've got some, you know, like people, people do well with them. Seem like a strong team yep. right now. Yeah, and this week, you know, Mandrakes definitely did not really come out to play with almost no one in big striking distance. I think I see two different 2-1 two, records with uh, the loss in the finals. So, overall, Mandrakes are good, but you still need to pilot them very well. So, nothing too crazy going on. Pathfinders have an okay weekend, but weren't in striking contention. I think the big surprise is actually Exaction Squad. Now, they're... In the data, there are two players playing Exaction Squad in a league, it looks like. And if I remove them, we lose the stats for them. So there's only two whole players playing them in the tournament setting this weekend. One in Poland, who went undefeated. Or no, lost in the finals to what looks like Nemesis Claw or Hunter Clay, one or the other. And then 
one small 10 person tournament where the exaction squad beat nemesis claw in the finals which is honestly kind of wild it's either they beat exaction squad or nemesis claw or hernkin jaeger so that is pretty wild as far as results go yeah exaction squad Inquisitorial yeah, Agents brothers. still with a big, uh, pretty high win rate up there. Um, not a yep, lot of players, but well. three, three players, three whole players. Everyone mostly with a winning record, with one player at a fifty-fifty. So with only three players, the data set I will like. I will say this data set for this week is kind of muddy, just because anywhere down towards the bottom we're having like four or five players. So really, it's hard to draw any large trends. It's really up at the top end. So Mandrake, Skellerpox, Commandos, Brood Brothers, Nemesis Claw that are both very played and doing well or doing poorly in a higher tech circle once the meta menace all the way down at the bottom of the win rate yeah uh, they jumped up in popularity like people tried to play them and uh got smacked around yeah one guy over in dice dojo in chicago a nice little underground uh basement tournament <laughs> His club name is the Cthulhu Dynasty with the Uwu, which is uh, very funny. He he tied the first round and then won the next three games, only losing to veteran guardsmen, which is, I think, one of the local meta players, uh, Nick M, who runs a little YouTube channel, Venture Mini, Venture Minis. So pretty pretty neat little tournament over there. Eighteen players, four rounds. Good job on Rob P for running that tournament. But yeah, this is a pretty small weekend. Hopefully this next weekend it's got some other stuff going on, but it might also be that we're hitting a little bit of the summer lull as people do some summer stuff. Nova's coming up. We'll have to, we'll have that be one of the big tournaments. Uh, anything else you're kind of curious about this week before we... Uh, or yeah, anything else you want to jump into? Nothing that really jumps out. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, nothing that really jumps out of me right there. Yeah, Nemesis Claw, you know, very played this week, but not doing all that well. Definitely showing that I think the Elite still running a couple issues. This is probably the biggest data set of the weekend. 20 players over 68 games, I think. And uh, one of the players, actually, and Poland went undefeated. That was the same tournament where he beat the Exaction Squad player, so tied the first round, won the next three. 20, 21, 21, 21, which is uh, wild score so good job for that nemesis claw player yeah very strong performance yeah to be fair probably the strongest performance of all of the nemesis claw for the weekend anybody do anything cool with intercession let's see intercession oh yeah we got a little small one in peru we've got the competitive circuit we're gonna actually be visiting peru for next week's podcast so that'll be fun and they had a small little tournament got second place tying the first round and then winning the next two with an 18 19 score in a 12 person three round tournament yeah our boys the intercessors looks like felgor back at 50 percent Novitiates, Hunter Clade, Phobos Strike Team, Blooded didn't do all that well this week. You know, they're a team that definitely has their highs and lows over the last couple of stat shows, and it looks like this week, definitely one of the lows. But they did go uh, 301, getting first place in Bogota, Colombia. So there still be hope yet, I think. Yeah, looks like Pathfinder's had just a few players, but did pretty well. Yeah. Maybe like 60. Does that translate to one of those players, mm -hmm. like, doing, taking a podium? Sorry, which one? One second. Pathfinder's. Oh, Pathfinder's. Uh, Pathfinder's this weekend? No, they did not do all that well this weekend. So, lots of, like, kind of scattershot records. Everyone, like, there's one player that did a three one and then everyone else went fifty fifty. Or no, two two a two one, a three one, and then two fifty fifties. So they did well, but no one was striking contention. And it was actually funny, the the two exaction squad players that would get counted, they were both in striking range, so pretty funny. 
and then Corsairs would probably be the next one where they have a 3-0 and then not really not really striking attention. So Vetguard, I think Vetguard were the true real winners of this weekend's in terms of play. That's a fun change of pace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They haven't really been doing all that well the last couple of weeks, so nice to see that they still got the chops. Not that either of us is particularly surprised. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all right. Well, listeners on Patreon or YouTube, wherever you guys are joining in with us, give us some questions in the chat for next time. And hopefully next week we'll have a bigger data set for us to poke around with. See you next week.